I'm Jessica Agile, I'm with Alliance for Green Economy, and I, I want to talk a little bit about what we do. Um, so we're a coalition of organizations that came together around 2009-2010 to oppose a it was to oppose a proposed nuclear power plant. Um, it was going to be a fourth nuclear reactor in Oswego County. And um, it was going to be extremely expensive, not create very many jobs, and continue to create radiological pollution. So these groups came together to fight that power plant. And because of the changing economics of nuclear power in the country, that plant is no longer feasible, not viable, and not going to happen, which is great. So the groups had started working together and really enjoyed working together and set out to say, well, how can we be proactive here now that this um, threat to our community is not going to happen? We still have nuclear power plants that are extremely dangerous and aging in, our, in Oswego and also between Syracuse and um, Rochester. There's the Ganae power plant, which is one of the oldest power, nuclear power plants in the country. And so they decided to begin fighting existing nuclear power plants. And as part of that fight, they really wanted to look at, you know, it's, it's one thing to fight dirty energy sources. It's another thing to fight for the solutions. And we've seen an amazing movement of people all over New York working to fight fracking. And I've seen that movement also turn to start to fight for solutions. So I think, and, and we've also seen, I don't know if you're aware of the coal plants that are um, shutting down for economic reasons and because of some policies to try to curb carbon emissions. As those coal plants are, are shutting down, without fighting for solutions, we're seeing those coal plants being turned to natural gas. So it's really, really important, we think, to not only fight the problems, but also fight really hard for the solutions that we know are possible. So one of the things that Alliance for a Green Economy is doing in terms of fighting for, for, the solutions, for the solutions is to really think about, well, how do we do that? We've heard from a, a lot of researchers, even since 2007, when Arjun Makajani of the um, Institute for Energy and Environmental Research came out with his book, Carbon Free and Nuclear Free, we've seen experts coming to the table and saying, a carbon-free and nuclear-free system is actually possible in the country, and now we've seen the Jacobson plan talk about how it might be possible in New York specifically. And so we know we know we have the potential for this, but we don't. What we don't know is how to get there. And we were we were really we've we've been we've been fighting um, at the state level to ask for such a plan, a plan that would talk about how to get there. Um, it's called the Read New York Plan, and I have actually have postcards here. Uh, we're running a campaign pushing the New York State Legislature and the governor and the Energy Planning Board to actually fund such a plan at the state level that would take the Jacobson Report and go farther um, and be a really comprehensive roadmap for New York. So I'm gonna pass these out. Um, and I hope that you'll sign them and uh, give them back to me. We're going to be doing a big drop at the Capitol, probably at the um, sometime around Earth Day. Um, but we've been we've been anticipating the release of this energy plan and kind of wondering. We we heard you know there's going to be some focus on renewable energy and energy efficiency in the energy plan, and we've seen we've seen Governor Cuomo put put in place some really great programs. Um, recently, like New York Sun, which creates a, a state commitment to solar. So we've seen a little bit of that, the turning of the state leadership toward renewables, and we were really looking forward to the release of this plan to see what it would have to say about how, how can New York move to a 100% renewable energy system. And when the plan came out in January, um, we were really disappointed because you know, as Keith said, there's a lot of great pictures and there's a lot of initiatives. If you look at the energy plan, you know, and you sort of read the bullet points, at first it sounds really good. Um, they really do talk about the need to move to renewable energy. They talk about the environmental impacts. They talk about the social impacts. They talk about um, creating communities that 
are, have less sprawl and more trans, more public transportation. There's a lot of rhetoric in there that sounds really good and that, that really points the way to how we can um, have a more sustainable energy system and healthier communities. But then when you look at the details, you realize that the state is not ready to go all in on renewables. And while they're trying to, to push renewable energy programs and help subsidize renewables and help bring re the amount of renewable energy up in the state, they're also protecting dirty industries. Um, and so we call this an all of the above energy plan because at the same time that they're promoting renewable energy and energy efficiency and promoting programs that would help those, they're also promoting, um, they're not willing to take a stand against coal, nuclear, and fracking. Um, so I hope that one of the things that we need to do, um, I know that the anti-fracking movement, uh, Alliance for a Green Economy, is part of New Yorkers Against Fracking. We're a member organization. We're very active. And we were so excited to see more than 100,000 comments on um, the draft environmental impact statement. So we know that the anti-fracking movement and um, the environmental movement in general in New York has the ability to raise um, massive public comments and massive public pressure to stop dirty energy. And so we hope that this will continue and that we will raise tens of thousands of comments on the energy plan as well. So we have um, some, a lot of draft comments back there and talking points and I hope that before you leave tonight you will write a comment or two or 23, <laughs> um, because they need to hear from all of us. I'll also tell you that there were six public hearings on the energy plan, and the environmental movement came out in force to many of them. Um, the last one was in Syracuse, and we had, a, we had over 100 people there, and I think aside from two or three people, everyone who spoke um, spoke basically against this all of the above policy in the energy plan. Spoke against fracking, spoke against nukes, and, and really spoke for um, a just transition to a renewable energy system. So I want to um, highlight some of the things that, that we have um, determined are some of the most important things to comment on in this plan. So one of the things is the, um, as Keith mentioned, this 80% greenhouse gas reductions by 2050. From 1990 levels, and you know this is this was hard fought for by the environmental movement, and it's a good goal. It's it's something that we can work on. It's something that we can improve upon, and so I would encourage you to tell the state that and the Energy Planning Board that we want a 100 percent um, greenhouse gas reductions by 2050. That 80 percent is probably not going to be good enough to um, avoid the, the most catastrophic consequences of climate change and and not only that but the 2050 goal is too far away we need the bulk of this transition to happen now to happen in the next 10 years the next 20 years if we put it off you know if we if we go business as usual till now and then do 80 percent reduction in 2040 it's going to be too little too late so so that particular thing you know i hope that that people will really talk about. Um, there's also really a lack of any benchmarks in this plan. So Keith mentioned the, the 2030, the 50% by 2030 in carbon reductions. And that really is the only interim goal in the entire plan that we could find um, with a specific number. And so you know, we asked, what about next year? What about 2018? What about 2020? What about 2025? We need to see specific benchmarks. And this is something that the um, entire environmental community of New York is united on, and everybody's making comments about benchmarks. So I hope that people will mention um, the need for benchmarks in the very near future and in the midterm. Uh, we need to see rapid reductions uh, of, of carbon emissions, of methane emissions, and that um, when we talk about greenhouse gas reductions, we need to be talking about all greenhouse gases, not just carbon. The other thing is that, 
So the state has, I'll let you know about a couple of uh, programs that the state has now. Um, they're the main vehicles by which the state is ramping up renewables or attempting to ramp up renewables and also ramp up energy efficiency in, this, um, in New York. One of them is the renewable portfolio standard. It set a goal of 30% renewable energy production in the state by 2015, by next year. And the other one is the energy efficiency portfolio standard. And that one set a goal of 15 percent reductions in um, energy consumption in the state by 2015. These are really, really important programs. Um, they're really the driving force behind the, we are seeing exponential growth in renewable energy and energy efficiency in the states, just that we're starting from so little. Mm -hmm. So expo exponential growth doesn't get you huge numbers yet. Um, but these really are the, the economic drivers of of the renewable energy revolution that we are seeing in New York. And these, these programs are under attack. Um, I'm gonna take a little aside to tell you about something that's really urgent that I hope you all will also um, go home and comment on tonight. <laughs> um, call your legislators. The, so um, New York comes out with a budget every year. And as some of you may know, um, we're in intense budget negotiations this week. The, the budget's going to be finalized very soon, and the funding for these renewable energy programs, the Renewable Portfolio Standard, the Energy Efficiency Portfolio Standard, and, and other um, programs that are, that are pushing a, a sustainable energy system in New York, um, the Senate is trying to cut $214 million. They're trying to raid those funds and take those funds, which actually a lot of them come from ratepayers. We pay a systems benefit charge on our bills to pay for renewable energy in the state. Um, they're trying to raid that money and put it back into the general fund. So aside from the energy plan, which we know doesn't go far enough, we also see a threat from um, the Senate and also the Assembly is trying to divert 20 million less, but still we don't want to see any diverted. Um, we're seeing an attack on this. So when you go home today, uh, please call the leadership in the Senate and the Assembly and also your own um, local senators and legislators and tell them you do not want to see a raid on renewable energy programs. We need the programs that we already have. Um, and if, if you need um, contact information for those, you can see me after. I have it written down here. And tell all your friends. Um, so, so these, these programs, they're not, as Keith said, they're not going to, they don't look like they're going to meet their targets at their current rates. They haven't quite figured out how to, um, to subsidize and to promote these programs so that they're meeting the goals. And they're, the energy plan does talk about extending these programs. It talks about extending them through 2020 and 20. 25, and I always forget which is which. Um, so it's the renewable portfolio standard through 2025 and the energy efficiency portfolio standard by through 2020. So they are talking about expanding them in, and improving them. This is, a, this is a good thing in the plan. The bad thing is they don't set any goals. They don't say what percentage will have of renewable energy by those dates. And because we don't see them meeting their goal by next year, they could just set the same goal and push it down the road. So, so a really important comment to make is that you want to see the goals that they've already set met. They need to spend the money. They need to improve these programs. We want to see 30% by 2015. And, the, and we want to see the 15% reductions in energy use by 2015. They need to figure out how to make it happen. And then they need to set more ambitious goals for their 2020 and 2025 dates. And we would also like to see them commit to extending them beyond those dates, because that's not that long from now. Um, we want to see these programs continue and grow. Um, So Keith talked a lot about natural gas, and there are a couple of specific 
initiatives in the, in the energy plan that need comment on the natural gas um, topic. One of them is the um, promotion of natural gas pipelines and infrastructure. We really need to fight that in New York. Um, the plan is really wobbly on whether frack, you know, I think they were trying really hard not to offend us and not to offend the industry, but they really should at this point, they, they should just bite the bullet and commit to a ban on fracking in New York. And we should tell them that, like that should be the plan. And um, they should also commit to phasing out the gas that they're importing from other states. Because this really is a moral question. We can't say, we're not gonna frack in New York, but oh, it's fine, let's just take it from somewhere else. So not only do we wanna ban in fracking, but we wanna phase out natural gas use in the state. And instead of talking about a phase out of natural gas in New York, they're talking about ramping up natural gas consumption. And particularly, they talk about converting ho um, home heating from oil and propane to natural gas. And right now, with natural gas prices low, this could be mean energy savings for people. But this isn't lo good long-term policy because A, you know, we know that the price of natural gas is volatile, it could go up. But also, everything that we know about what a renewable energy system will look like, um, we know that we have to change everything that's using fossil fuels, whether it's car, liquid fuels, whether it's cars or our home heating systems, we need to change that to electricity. And then we need to produce that electricity with renewable energy sources, wind, solar, hydro, etc. We have an aging nuclear fleet and we see the cost of energy, cost of electricity in a lot of markets going down. Part of this is because natural gas is cheap right now, but part of it in a lot of markets is because renewable energy production is starting to grow. And wind power in particular in the Midwest is putting nuclear power out of business. And so the, the nuclear power industry <coughs> is sort of in a fight for its life right now. And that's not different in New York. In New York, we have um, two nuclear power plants that have made financial analyst lists of um, most vulnerable to close. That's um, the Fitzpatrick nuclear plant, which is in Oswego. It's a small nuclear reactor um, that's already losing money, and the Ghanai nuclear power plant, which is, um, like I said, between here and Rata, uh, here in Syracuse. That one has a power purchase agreement that's going to end in the summer. And at that point, um, it's not likely to make money because it's also a small plant. Mm -hmm. We also have um, Indian Point, which is a profitable reactor because it's large and uh, there are two reactors working there. Um, but that one's up for relicensing and the state is fighting the relicensing. It's, it's really dangerous because it's very close to New York City. It's not an area that can be evacuated. It's on an earthquake fault. Um, and so we, if the state win the, wins its battle, and if the, if the movement wins the battle against Indian Point, and if these other nuclear plants shut down for economic reasons, we also have um, Nine Mile One and Two, which currently are profitable, but because these plants are aging, something big and expensive could break. And if something big and expensive breaks, the company will have to decide whether it's worth it to fix the reactor. And the reactors. I mean, that's kind of what's been shutting down nuclear power plants in other states. Some of them have been purely economic, but some of them have been something really big went wrong and broke, and the company decided it wasn't worth fixing. So we're looking at potential early nuclear retirements in the state, maybe starting this year, maybe starting next year, and definitely by 20, 2050, because <coughs> nuclear plants have a retirement schedule. They're only, they were originally licensed for 40 years and they can be relicensed for another 20. Um, they're gonna, we're gonna be nuclear free in New York. <coughs> and the, the energy plan doesn't mention this. The energy plan just kind of predicts that we'll just keep having nuclear at the same level that we've had it. Uh, or maybe a little bit more because um, some of the plants can do power upgrades where they put more fuel in. Um, and get a little more power. We think this is really irresponsible. 
because nuclear um, retirements need good planning. A, so that we don't replace these plants with fossil fuels, so that they're replaced with renewable energy and efficiency, and also because there are workers and communities that depend on these plants for jobs and for um, tax revenue. And so we're calling for the, for the energy plan to include phase-out plans for all the state's nuclear reactors that would look at how, these, how the energy should be replaced with renewables and efficiency, how that can happen, and also um, come up with some policies for how to ease the, um, the impact on communities and workers. And our friends at the Sierra Club are calling for the same thing for coal plants, which um, are shutting down and predicted to continue to shut down. So, you know, part of, part of an energy plan, part of a responsible energy plan is about um, really going for the solutions that we want, really going for the fuel mix that we want. But the other part is to recognize what the impact is on individuals and communities, because not everybody, not the impacts are not equal across the board. And some people who really rely on these old, dirty industries, fossil fuel industries and nuclear industries, um, we need to take care of them as part of this transition. The other people we need to take care of are um, low income rate payers. And the energy plan sets a, a goal of affordable affordability um, and, and making sure that the percentage of people's um, income, the, the percentage of people's uh, electricity and heating bills as it relates to their income doesn't go up. But there's nothing in the plan where they talk about how they're going to do that. So they set this goal. They say, you know, affordability is a top line goal of this plan, but they don't talk about how. And so, you know, that's a really big problem because we, we there are ways to do um, this renewable energy transition that could bring down rates if we do it in a planned way, and there's other ways that could totally screw with the market and we could see um, price volatility. So, so we need to be taking care of people along the way. I will say also that um, not everything in this plan is bad. Um, there, there are some good initiatives in the plan, but they really lack specificity, and so as you're writing your comments, you might want to compliment the Energy Planning Board on some of the things that they got right. Um, talk, they are talking about strengthening building codes. They are talking about ramping up renewables and then just push them, say, you know, we need details. And the other thing that we're asking people to comment on, if, you com if you're going to comment soon, is on these missing documents. Keith mentioned them, the greenhouse gas inventory and the, the study of the potential of New, that New York has for renewable energy and energy efficiency. These are really key pieces of information that should go into any responsible energy plan. We sh if we're going to talk about an 80% reduction in greenhouse gases by 2050 or 100% reduction, um, first we need to know where are our greenhouse gases coming from? What industries? What greenhouse gases are they? If we're, gonna, if we're gonna come up with a plan for reducing them, we need to know what they are and where they're coming from. And this plan doesn't have an up-to-date greenhouse gas inventory, even though it was promised in the scope. The other, the other key piece is to know what is New York's potential? What can we get from efficiency? What can we get from renewables? And they did a study on that, which is great. Unfortunately, we can't see the study. And the way they talk about the study in the energy plan um, leaves us concerned. Because they talk about things like um, economic potential, which means potential, for instance, in um, the energy efficiency realm, what's the potential for energy efficiency that will pay for itself? So that's good, it's really good to know that, but that doesn't encompass all energy efficiency potential. Like maybe some of us are willing to pay more to get some energy efficiency out of the system. 
And it also talks about something called achievable potential, which out of this economic potential that they've decided to cap everything at, they've, de they've determined that only some of that is actually achievable. But they don't talk about how they've decided that it's achievable. <laughs> and to me, this is so um, illogical because to me, you would say, what's the potential? And then you create a plan to achieve that potential. You, you create a set of policies that would help you achieve that potential. And so part of the, the comment period and part of the strong comments that we need to put in to the energy planning board are about this study and we can't see it. So um, we have Alliance for a Green Economy along with FRAC Action and many other organizations around the state have submitted a couple letters to NYSERDA um, and the Energy Planning Board asking for these studies, demanding the release of these studies. We have not heard any official response back. Um, we, we have reason to believe that maybe they're coming soon and maybe we'll see them before the end of the comment period, but they need to hear from you. They need to keep hearing public pressure that we want to see the whole plan. And we want to know what New York's renewable energy and energy efficiency potential is. And if they give us these documents just a few days before the end of the comment period, that's not a real public comment process. Um, and they need to extend the comment period. And then I'll finally just say that um, this energy plan is really important, but it's not the it's not where the fight will end on achieving a renewable energy system. The plan is going to inform how state agencies deal with public policy around energy. And when the plan is finalized, we will need to take the fight to those agencies. So the renewable portfolio standard and the energy efficiency portfolio standard are going to be determined by the Public Service Commission. And so we need to fight there for really strong programs. We would like to see what those programs should look like in the plan and how they fit into a whole energy mix and a whole set of programs that will get us um, across agencies and across the state will get us to a renewable energy system. Um, but even after the plan is finalized, we have to take the fight to these agencies. So. Um, I'll end there and just say, you know, I hope that I hope that the same vigor that has been throughout the anti-fracking movement in commenting and holding um, the state leadership's feet to the fire to keep um, fracking out of New York will be applied to fighting for the solutions that we know are possible, that we know are necessary, and that are really urgent given the climate catastrophe that we're facing. There, our choices now are simple. Lose that which we hold dear, or communicate the message in a way that's unstoppably clear. No fracking way, no fracking way. Tell these frackers to frack off both tomorrow and today. No fracking way, no fracking way, no fracking way. No frackin way.